on our task force, on the Executive Council, and Democracy Found on the Leadership Circle. Today, Nick serves as Palermo's Chief Product and Innovation Officer. He is responsible for ensuring that Palermo's family of brands continues to provide innovative products that meet the uh, changing demands of the marketplace. He believes in focusing on health, wellness, and sustainability as keys to fulfilling Palermo's mission to deliver a great pizza experience. From ideation to commercialization, Nick and his team offer inventive solutions to both Palermo's, branded products, and private and local stores. His passion for pizza and people is without a doubt a tribute to his grandparents, whose spirit continues to guide the business they founded more than 55 years ago. Please join me in welcoming Luca. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, it's, uh, I grew up in Grafton. Uh, I live here again. I'll tell you a little story about my family, um, company, and why I'm here today. So, um, as I mentioned, my grandparents came from Sicily in 1954. Uh, they didn't actually come the traditional route to Ellis Island. Uh, they actually had to come to Venezuela. Uh, they didn't have to come to Ellis Island. And, they're just you know, traditional immigrants that live in the farm country. They didn't have anything in their pockets. So when they got here, they worked various jobs. My grandmother was a fister, she was a mason, saved up as much money as he could until 1964 when they opened their restaurant along the side. It was a very popular restaurant um, back in the 60s. It had famous movie stars and musicians from Frankie Avalon and James Darren. They, they would come and the bar would stay open until four in the morning. And then in 1969, we decided to open up this pizzeria. And the pizzeria is where they got really popular. Um, it's, it's, you know, just a whole story I can go into that for a while about the pizzeria and the life of the pizzeria. And um, so, so the story goes, one day, um, one of the original Sendex owners, a human grandfather, said, Jack. So, so his name was Gaspari from my grandfather. It was Providence. But when they got to America, it was impossible to keep the time. So he changed his name to Jack. She changed his name to Zeke. So, anyway, he said, Jack, I'm going to bring you a, a Stouffer's French bread pizza. He said, why, why would you bring me a Stouffer's French bread pizza? It's like, it's a trial. It's like, the start. I hate it. It's like, that's the point. You should get in and throw some pizza. And so then in 1979, my family got into frozen pizza. At the time, um, it was a really small uh, operation. I mean, they would actually cut their own onions, cut their own peppers, they made their own sauce. Um, but from there, they really um, had these core values. And the core values that they have were really great customer service, treating your employees right, really great. And those things have we been still uh, our entire uh, existence. And those things are still with me today, personally. 1989, we really got a big break. We became the first company to launch a rising press pizza. So people think that it was DiGiorno, but actually it was back in 1989. We invented the technology with another press uh, manufacturer. And from there, uh, this company called Safeway. Now, say for all instance, took a big risk on us. Our facility was on 8th and Maple, and it was basically a, a house that my grandfather converted into a manufacturing facility. We still have that facility today. It's pretty amazing to go back there and seeing what it was that was sold house to currently 250,000 square foot manufacturing facility. It's, it's just amazing to, to see the, the difference. I would say, though, in the uh, between the late 80s and early 90s, um, he started to say, how do, we, how do we think differently about what we're doing? But it's, it's difficult at that time. You know, frozen pizza was, was jacked, it was tombstone, it was those very simple, let's say, thin crust bark. It wasn't until 2003 that we really started to focus on innovation. And we launched the nation's first ultra because of that item, we were able to build a new facility. That product got nationwide distribution 
Costco, and it was our, our previous plan at the time. You know, innovation is an interesting thing that, um, you know, you know I, was, I was talking uh, earlier about innovation. In my world, innovation is just, it's just a product. Um, but the mindset has to change to innovation in everything we do. Otherwise, you're not going to succeed as a business. Time can change faster now than they have in the past. And so, well, most innovation I'll we'll talk about early on is about the product innovation. I want you to think about innovation, whether it's whether it's in HR or whether it's in um, technology, thinking differently to the world. So in 2007, we had this new facility and we had this amazing new oven from Italy. All the equipment from Italy makes this amazing oven. We said, hey, we had this great innovation on Palermo's Primo thing. We're going to kill it with this new item called Palermo's Heart. It's got pesto, it's got uh, fresh you know, cherry tomatoes, and it's going to be amazing. We launched it, and it failed. It just completely flopped. As soon as we put it out there, people liked it, liked it, but then it just it didn't do anything. Then we're like, we're like we're we realized though, is AR, the brand outside of the hospital, was not recognized. Two, it was ahead of its time. Right now, a product like this will do well. But at the time, we, we went ahead of our speeds. We didn't really think about what is the consumer actually So from 2007 to 2013, we were mostly private label. We had our Palermo's Primo Thin brand just doing well. But we saw what was happening with the craft groups. We saw that these craft breweries were coming in and just taking massive market share. From traditional groups who said, How do we have that mindset to, to have the best mindset? And not even thinking of frozen pizza company, but thinking just like, if we're going to make the best pizza, how do we do it? So we spent multiple years figuring out the recipe, you know, going to actually restaurant suppliers of, of cheese and sauce and sausage. And remember our, our sausage cutting we had, we had 15 different sausages. Might sound fun, but when you that much sausage over the course of a a day, not to be too much. Um, and so we made the best frozen pizza we could. We said, okay, we got this really great pizza. What are we going to call this thing? Because even though it's owned by the Americans, we're not going to call it the Americans. So we had a bunch of brainstorming sessions. Um, one of the names that we, we thought of was Saucy Tongue. No one wrote that before. Then we thought about, you know, hang on to this time. And uh, so that kind of got a bit of a fun path. One of the one of the ideas that came to us was when my grandfather was working on the farm after his long day of work, he actually fell asleep on his dog. The dog was just taking that home. How about the name Wandering Dog? That's a cool, pleasant thing, right? <laughs> like, no, that's probably not going to work. So as a kid, I remember him on the phone all the time with different cable companies or utility companies. He's always just screaming and screaming. <laughs> and at the table, you know, basically the Italian family is like, whoever talks the loudest is the one who gets the attention. And so he said, I'm not, I'm not screaming, I'm just talking. And so that kind of takes on the other side and say, yeah, Scream in Sicilian. That's what we call it. So we launched Scream in Sicilian. We didn't go to this big nationwide launch. We had 50 stores in Chicago and 50 stores in Milwaukee. And we didn't put on promotion at all. Most world tickets are good. I don't think so. I'm guessing at some point we bought it on a not full price, but we did it full price, no promotions. It started to sell. And the retailers started wanting it. And they didn't want us to, like, they put it in without having us to actually pay to put it on the shelf, which you can't do today. And this brand grew and grew and grew. Um, today it's our most valuable brand, it's, uh, it's our nationwide brand. It's the biggest brand we had by far. So after that, we said, okay, we're excited. We've done something really cool. Let's, let's try something different. And so we launched a brand called Cook and Ride, which was, uh, you know, most of the time was traditional pizza. So kind of back to that health Italia of your pesto and your all natural ingredients. We launched Cook and Ride. And we were riding, riding high. We launched nationwide. And, did do a lot of stuff. Okay, well, we went too fast. We took that brand and we brought it back to the natural channel and 
we refocus it. And now today that brand is the number one brand in all of the natural development. So whether it's all food or sprouts or fresh thyme, all these natural sources. But they found its niche. So between 2016 and today, um, we've really been a, uh, you know, a product focused uh, customer intimate company, um, really delivering um, really unique, leading edge, leading edge products. Um, but when we fail, we want to fail fast and make sure that we know what we're doing. And we're going to try something that might work. We, we have more stories of failure than success, but it's making sure that what you are successful on, continue to focus on it, relevant. But if you're not willing to try, then just, just heck with the business. Because you have to continue to get it from the side in any of your businesses. And I think that's what, um, you know, after the years of doing this, it's, again, it's innovation that we can do. Um, my family has, has taught me some really good core values. I'm not sure how many of you are in family businesses. If you're about thinking about going into family business, I'm not sure if I'd recommend it. <laughs> just family with friends, you know, think like more than twice about it. Um, but having said that, I wouldn't have learned what I've learned about business. And I wouldn't trade for the world because of everything they've taught me. Um, and hopefully, I'll be able to teach my family. Um, so in my family, we've, we've got uh, my father, the chairman and CEO, my uncle, Angelo, so Giacomo, the chairman and CEO, Angelo is our president, uh, Lori, my mother, is our chief field officer. We have other family members in the business doing other odds and ends, but um, they've all taught me something new. We've all been through our show, which is our first day on our show. Uh, hopefully, I can have a good balance of all of them. Um, my dad really taught me not Never be completely satisfied with the way you do things. It's kind of that innovation mindset. It intends, for those of you who might have met him, he's a very intense person. Business, life, uh, he's very competitive. And then sense of community. As intense as he is, he's probably the most generous person I've ever known. Sometimes too generous, uh, which sometimes makes it difficult for, you know, for donation requests and whatnot. He always says yes. My Uncle Angelo has taught me humility. Patience, humor. My mom Lori has taught me creativity, brand building, innovation. And so I wouldn't be here where I am today without my family through you know all the the tough things we've had and the tough times. Um, because of them and the connection we had and that legacy back to my, my grandparents is why we're successful today. Um, so you know, why am I here? I don't, you know, our company is not good in Grafton. Um, well, I grew up in Grafton. We moved to Grafton in 1992. Um, in 2005, I graduated from Grafton High School. And then I moved to Milwaukee. I went to UWM, got a degree in marketing, and I thought I was going to stay in Milwaukee for a while. I still love Milwaukee. It's a great city. Um, but during uh, the pandemic, my wife and I moved back. And uh, we have our two kids here. Get to another uh, once I go to Woodview, and um, we're having this at such, such a special uh, part of our, our lives now. Kind of going back, when I was in high school, all I, I mean, all I ever was in, so all I know was there's other things, but mostly, mostly pizza. So I worked in festivals, um, it's fair, and things like that. Um, then I went into food service, so I sold to companies uh, like stadiums or different uh, restaurant chains across the country. And then I moved into innovation, and then I moved into the pizzeria, and then I moved into marketing, and now I oversee as well quality of HR. And it's kind of a, a weird, you know, set of uh, departments. Um, but one of the things for myself is not being consistent. And not just being completely, I mean, always being happy with what you have, what you have, but not being really consistent in the job you're doing and what you can do. And I always thought about the situation you're in. If you want to change things or if you're not being happy with it, you have three options. You can just accept it, you can walk away from it, or change it. 
And in my role, I was just gonna stop. My family's business, so I wanna I wanna do that. Not walk away from the family's business. And so for me, it was just like this inner churn to just do better. And so it's kind of like to be careful what you ask for. I said, I think I think I might be able to do marketing. I think I might be able to do all and for the record, I'm not an expert in any of these things, but it's finding the right people, but then having them just challenge the steps. So HR was the last one. And uh, that's probably one of the biggest opportunity is, is innovation within HR, even just in the way that we onboard people, to the way that we do employee reviews, even just the, our systems. It's really important that the way that we Think about it, the way we used to do it, the way we do it today, and people are such an important part. I mean, people are the reason that we're able to do what we do in our lives. It's, it's not us, it's the amount of people. It's the people, but it's making sure that they're trained properly, they know exactly what they want, they're fully engaged. So I think, you know, in, in closing, I think about this group, and I think about Grafton, and where we can make an impact. Um, a lot of people ask, well, there's so much going on, there's so many things I want to work on, but think about your sphere of influence. Where are you able to make change? Whether it's just yourself, your family, community. If you can do more and more, that's great. But just focus one step at a time. I think with that, I crafted specifically this area, southeast Wisconsin, I think is, is well positioned for the next 50 years. So if you think about this globally, where we are right now is probably the best place to be. It's the best place to raise your family. We have the largest access to fresh water. We've got incredible natural resources. If you look at where they're projecting the future population of the week, it's the corridor between Chicago all the way up to the Bay. So where we are in Boston, we have an incredible opportunity for our future. So I think that where we are today is great. And I'm really excited that uh, there is the Grafton Chamber of Commerce. Um, Cam and I just met recently, and I'm excited, really excited to be back and be a part of the Grafton community again. Um, so um, thank you all for letting me talk to you today. I'm uh, happy to chat with you guys afterwards. And, So enough about me. Um, we're here today for uh, some amazing individuals who received the award. So, um, so the chamber had a really tough time making these decisions. Criteria were factored in the this. So one, you have to be under 40, um, employed as a chamber member, but also these qualities. Uh, outstanding commitment to the industry, going above and beyond. Integrity, such a critical part. It shows me a given that integrity is part of anything like this. Sense of community, so important. And then participation in the Chamber of Events was also considered. So, um, with that, I'd like to introduce Danica Tramper from the Casimir Center for Community Performance to join me. I'll present our first award. It's one of my favorite so it was fascinating hearing the history and how it's transformed, and I really enjoyed that. So it's just an honor to be here. On behalf of the Casimir Center for Human Performance, our vision is of a better world where every person can pursue their best self toward the common good. And it correlates so well with why we are all here today. We believe dreams can become reality and every person deserves opportunity to pursue their best self at home, in work, and in the community. Our work transforms people's potential through learning and growth that accelerates performance, boosts well-being, and equips you to pursue your unique best future. I would encourage anyone interested in the personal goal of learning to visit the Casimir Center um, by checking out our website and we have wonderful community events and classes that you can take a look at. We believe in potential for everyone. And the Chamber and the Grafton community would really love to welcome Carissa Barnes, Executive Director of the Ozark Nonprofit Center, as our first honoree. I would like to invite Dr. Michael Weber, one of the people who nominated Carissa.
Marissa for the support. Join me up here to say a few words, please. Thank you. Thank you for those words and thoughts. Very, very appropriate for our group and our uh, honorees. Uh, I'm here representing the Ozaki Nonprofit Center Board. And as a board, we uh, recommended uh, Clarissa. Um, and if you had a category of under 30, she would fit into that group. Um, so she has done just a, a remarkable job in the last two or three years as our executive director. She, uh, we have uh, now 12 uh, nonprofit agencies within this building. And if you can imagine keeping 12 executive directors happy to keep things going, she does a great job with that. Some of us call her the energizer bunny. <laughs> and if you're around her for very long, that energy rubs off on you. She's just a wonderful leader, wonderful person. And our board uh, uh, welcomes her and thanks to him and the chamber, especially for this uh, celebration. What a great thing to do. We take uh, time out of our busy schedules to celebrate some of the movers and shakers in our community. So, uh, so here's Carissa. And Given all that Carissa has done in our community, it is my privilege and honor to welcome her up here and the Garfield Air Chamber of Commerce, 40 under 40 awards, please come up. I don't really want to say anything. I don't like to be in front of people like this, but I know Pam really prepared me and wanted to make sure that I said something. So uh, I'm honestly really humbled and really appreciate this award. Uh, but I'm definitely more of a support person, background behind the scenes, and really I'm our entire team that does everything. We have an amazing board, awesome volunteers we have today, and some great staff. Um, I only think that I got recognized because of all the work that the Ozaki Nonprofit Center does. Um, we moved to this great building here in our new event space. Um, we're looking at different ways to decrease costs for nonprofits. So that's really our mission, and that's why I kind of do what I do. I do have a passion for the community, but at the end of the day, it's not profit. So if you have any time after this event, I really encourage you to walk around and get to know all of them. But thank you so much. Next, the Chamber is proud and privileged to recognize Nicolette Burkholz, Youth Services Director at the USS Liberty Memorial Library as our second honoree. I would like to invite Dave Antoine up to say a few words. I have known Nicolette for several years now. I work with Nicolette on the Holiday Events Committee. And she always adds new ideas to all the segments, as well as sharing her own. And this year, she brought all those wonderful bands from recent break. Nicolette is very well liked by the parents and children at the Children's Library because of her smiles and helpfulness to the families who stop in for books as well as programs. She truly has a special charm to all who know her and has great customer service to our residents. Probably her biggest accomplishment was the story walk in Veterans Park. 
In spring of 2018, Nicolette presented Grafton Public Library's Story Walk Commission proposal. The project combines early literary learning, family engagement, and appreciation of outdoors and physical activity. Story Walk is a perfect opportunity for parents and other adults to be their children's first teacher while reading and playing outdoors. Displaying the project in one of our main parks allows us to promote literacy engagement in some of the more underserved population of our community. As native Grafton, Nicolette has been helping the community without seeking personal recognition and through indication of integrity. I would guess that few people in the community are aware of all the things she has done and continues to do. It's for these reasons that I nominated Nicolette Burkles as 440 Outstanding White people. Thank you for all you do, Nicolette. It is clear to me that you're very deserving of this recognition, and I'm honored to present you with this award. Please join us up here. I'd like to thank um, the chamber, obviously. I'd like to thank Dave for nominating me in the first place. Um, I'm extremely honored, and I would also like to thank all the people in the room who value all of these traits in your own community. The community is extremely important. It's why I do the work that I do in my job, but it's also what drives me the rest of the time. I believe that a generous community is a better community, so I strive to be generous with my time, with my effort, most importantly with my enthusiasm. <laughs> so thank you very much for honoring these kids for today. Thank you. Uh, Next, I'd like to invite up Josh Graham from Big Five Nine and other event sponsors to join me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and Big Five Nine, you know, the Five Nine comes from the fact that we've been open since 1959. We've been in communities for 164 years in Southeast Wisconsin. And our mission is to make lives better. We do that in a variety of ways, but the main ways are you know, volunteering, giving back physically and uh, financially sometimes as well. But I think any banker can tell you the best way is when we get to have those relationships with our customers. I had one of those unique experiences yesterday. New business owner here, um, opening up a new business in Grafton, came in and wanted to get some help with an account. Was talking to him about his business and business plan. He uh, takes uh, shoes and kind of custom designs them to what his customers want. We're talking through some of his headaches, some of his hardships, a variety of most of the logistics, like many business owners, shipping, handling, that kind of stuff. But the most impressive thing was, was this customer's 12 years. At 12, I certainly wasn't uh, thinking about that new business or talking about logistics and shipping and business plans and stuff like that. So I imagine like all of our work today, they have that same work ethic. That this guy had. And so, thank you to each and every one of you for Bank Five Nine for being uh, examples for our <laughs> So, I am honored today to present our next award to Amanda Hanson, General Manager uh, at the Hampton Inn and Suites. Uh, Maggie Dom Dobson nominated Amanda for this award. So, I'd like her up, invite her up to say a few.
Good morning, everybody. Um, I have broken through the Cedar Bubble today. My name is Megan Gabson. I'm the executive director of the Cedar Bird Chamber of Commerce. Um, so we kind of like to joke that I've crossed the border here I am this morning. Um, but today I'm honored very much to present or, or nominate Amanda Hansen, the general manager of Grafton's Hampton and Suites, with me for a Grafton Area Chamber of Commerce for a wonderful year. I've had the pleasure of working with Amanda directly as both a member of the Cedar Brook Chamber and a fellow board member of the Occupy Tourism Council. Uh, Cedar Brook is a smaller community, as you know, and uh, we do have a very vibrant tourism effort. And um, having someone like Amanda on our side, both with her expertise in travel and uh, her great customer service, is always a huge bonus. She's always available to help if we need additional rooms or maybe meeting space. And she's always willing to accommodate us whenever, whenever possible. Not only does she have um, excellence in her work, she excels at community involvement. Amanda has served on the Grafton Area Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, as well as the Ozaki County Tourism Board of Directors, plus has actively promoted both, both her hotel and Ozaki County's general area to travel at the Wisconsin Governor's Conference on Tourism for many years. If any of you have ever gone there with Amanda, you also know she's one of the biggest ambassadors of fun during that conference. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda's guidance has helped keep our area on the map for visitors looking for a place to stay, whether friendly and relaxing or professional. Outside of work, Amanda is a doting mother and wife and is an active participant in her son's many activities. And I'm also proud of the great collaboration that we have as Chambers of Commerce in our area. Um, being part of both of them, Amanda has really helped and been a part to culminate that great relationship. She's a valued member of our collective Ozaki County business community, and I am very proud to honor her today for her commitment to our area by uh, presenting with one of these wonderful awards. Congratulations. Well, it is truly my pleasure to acknowledge all your efforts in our community, and with this award and this recognition is very well deserved. Presented to Amanda Hinton. First and foremost, thank you so much to my dad for the nomination and to the Grafton Area Chamber for the support. My husband and mom are here today, and I'd just like to thank them and for their love and support. Um, I didn't grow up in Grafton, but I've been here for nine years, and I feel like I am a more part of the community now than I ever have been. Um, I work with the Chamber and the Council have been so rewarding over the years. When people say that Grafton is a great place to live, work, and play, that couldn't be more true. Thank you very much for support. Uh, our final award this morning goes to Jessica Wolf, Community Development Director for the Building Graph. Unfortunately, Jessica is unable to join us today, but I would like to invite Deb Brown and Jim Fisher up to say a few words about Jessica. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My colleagues and myself would like to first thank the Chamber of Commerce for offering the four under 40 award initiative recognition for the young professionals and their contributions to the community. When my co-workers and I saw the opportunity to nominate Jessica Wolf, the Director of Community Development, Grafton, it was given to her nomination 
with her dynamic personality and with great pride and acknowledgement for Jessica. Jessica had been with the village of Wack for roughly 10 years now and has demonstrated outstanding leadership. She is always led by example and embodies the positive energy which is needed to support the Grafton community. During her tenure, she has exemplified the motto, quality of life naturally. In pursuing development projects, she has been instrumental in the redevelopment of the South Commercial, East Corridor, and Downtown Districts. Jessica's integrity is evident in all the projects she pursues outside of her planning responsibilities. She steps up to lead and quietly supports from behind the scenes when she sees the potential projects benefiting the community, such as spearheading the Paramount Blues Park and the Paramount Plaza. There are many others. I must add that Jessica's commitment to improving the time of her volunteer. She is on the Otaki Economic Development Board, mentors students at John Long Middle School, interested in pursuing a career in planning, and is a longtime volunteer with Big Brothers and Sisters. She also volunteers for children, like the Gero of Grafton, Fourth of July, holidays, Christmas parades, ladies' night out, and golf outings, just to name a few. I could go on and on, but I know you understand outstanding leadership skills. We are honored to be here today, and I know Jessica is very grateful for the award. So the Chamber is very fortunate to work with many individuals who help to improve our work community. This year, the Chamber is pleased to recognize Jessica Wolf as the final recipient of this year's 440 Award. As mentioned, Jessica is unable to join us, but I was able to present her the award last week. So here are a few words from her. Try. Hit it, hit it work. Uh, we have it up as loud as we can. Yeah, it's like. It was very well received, lots of tears. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I know that we're all proud to have uh, these four individuals, so um, we thank you all for supporting them. We thank all the nominees um, that nominated these people. We thank everyone that recognized what they've done to the community. So thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. I'm going to talk to you guys a bit today, and uh, if you're a winner, congratulations. But, uh, definitely deserve it. So, uh, I'd like to uh, bring up the hand kit. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. These are the days that we live for in our industry the idea that we get to acknowledge and recognize excellence. Um, on the people who live, work, and play here, um, and the idea that all of you are here to share that with us is, is huge. 
Uh, this is our inaugural four under 40, so please uh, be patient with us as we grow and continue to try new things and, and go in new directions. Thank you to Sarah McGraw, who is uh, our administrative assistant and program coordinator, who really spearheaded this effort uh, and made us uh, push hard to acknowledge our 40 and under crowd. Our YPs are what are going to make a difference for us moving forward, and so we really need to be grateful. Um, I don't want to cry, but I need to say I'm, I'm the age to be the mother of all of you. <laughs> and um, that means a ton to me because I, I would be honored to be your moms. All of you are amazing young women who have mattered and made a difference and gone above and beyond and done more than any of your peers would ever consider. Um, so my pride, runneth, my cup runneth over with pride for all of you, for our community, for our organization, because what you do matters and makes a huge difference every day. And kudos to you because you are amazing. So thank you. And to Nick, he, uh, how lucky for us to have uh, a leader uh, in our state, in our country, who lives right here in my ground. So, I love it. I love it when they come back. Um, so we're, we're grateful to have him back in our community. He's going to be a uh, mover and shaker in Grafton, as well as uh, across the world. And I'm, I'm proud to say I know him. So to all of you, Angela Elizabeth, uh, our special events and tourism coordinator, thank you to our board of directors. Please take some food. I'm not kidding. I don't want to take it home. But we hope you have a wonderful day. We hope that moving forward, you consider to keep the YP event to march. Oh, we hope that you will continue to keep us on your radar as far as YP events. We will be hosting a happy hour on March 15th at Sahala, so please check us out on that. It's 40 and under, so I'm sorry for those of you who are over. We'll work on some, some now YP events coming up soon. Um, if you need anything, if we can help you in any way, please let us know. Thank you to our amazing sponsors, Bank 59, Cascara Center for Human Performance, for Washington State Bank. Without you, we couldn't do what we do. Uh, and maybe we could do technology better if you were we brought you in there. But thank you all. Have a wonderful day and thanks for joining us. Sure.